class, I just wanted to jump on here and do a quick little video on um, section 5.1. So um, again, I'm gonna give you the section, not the homework number, just because it's different for the classes that I have. So 5.1 is all about being able to graph an inequality, okay? We just learned in 1.2 how to graph a line. All right, now we're gonna transition into an inequality line. Um, in 1.2 was an equation because it's an equal sign. Now we're dealing with inequalities. So let me share my screen and I'm gonna share, um, just walk you through how to um, how to graph these, how to, how to uh, be efficient when you're working in 5.1. So um, when you're working through this, here's just a couple things that you need to remember. Um, one is when you're dealing with an inequality like, right here, like less than or greater than. Now remember you read these just like you're reading a book from left to right. So if I hit the smaller side first, this is the less than sign. If I hit and I'm reading left to right and I hit the larger side first, it's the greater than. I know that's um, some people get really confused on those, but that's how you read it. You read it left to right. If you use either of these, okay, either of these less than or greater than signs in your inequality, you're going to use a dashed or dotted line. What that means is, um, is that the points that are on the line are not included. It's everything greater than that or less than that, but it doesn't include the line. That's why it's dashed. If you see the symbols less than and equal to or greater than and equal to, okay? Now we have an equal sign. What that means is every point on the line is included. So you're going to use a solid um, line and solid means those points are also included. Okay, so if there's an equal sign, you're gonna use the um, the solid line, if there's uh, no equal sign, it's just less than or just greater than, then you're going to use the dashed line. Okay, so let me show you how you're going to use this tool. So the first, uh, the, the next thing that you want to notice is how is the inequality set up? So this one, if you remember your equation of a line, this is in the form y equals mx plus b, which is the slope intercept form. So the M is your slope. And remember, slope is always rise over run. And the easiest way to, to graph slope is you always rise every single time. You rise and then you run to the side of the, um, the sign of the slope. So if, you, if it's a negative slope, you would run to the negative side. If it's a positive slope, you would run to the positive side. And then the B is the y-intercept. So you always start, when you're graphing, you always start at B, okay? So I'm gonna do this man with, uh, by hand and then I'm gonna show you how to use the graphing tool. So with this one, we're crossing at negative eight. So I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna put a point at negative eight and I'll show you with the tool. And then my slope is always the number in front of my X, okay? So in this case, it's a one. So my slope is one over one. So if you ever have, say you have the slope 2x, the slope is rise to run one. If you have the slope one third, it's rise one, run three, okay? So from this y-intercept, I'm going to rise one, run one, rise one, run one. And that is the linear equation, or that's the line that we're graphing. Okay, so now let me show you how to do this using the graphing tool. So the way you're gonna do is you come over here, you click to enlarge the graph. Now you see all these tools here. The first thing you need to make sure that you have is you're going to look at your, come over here, you're gonna look at your inequality. In this case, it's a less than and equal to. Okay, so I'm gonna make sure that this solid line is, is um, clicked. If I use this one, that is what you would use for the less than only and greater than only. So since this is less than and equal to, I'm gonna click here. And then 
I'm gonna pick up my line tool. So here's your line tool. I'm gonna to come over to my graph and I'm gonna put the point right on the Y axis at negative eight. Now notice up in the yellow, see where it says click the graph to plot the first point on your line? You see the ordered pair zero, negative eight. That tells you where your point is. So you always know where your point is. So I'm gonna click, you see it's blue. Now I'm gonna do my slope. I'm gonna rise one, run one. Do you see how the line works? Rise one, run one. Oops, okay. So again, I can look at those ordered pairs. I'm gonna come down here. Look at the orders, ordered pairs. I rose one, which takes me to negative seven. And then I ran to the positive side one, which takes me to positive one. So now I click again. Now notice the line is yellow or orange, which however your, your screen shows it, and two blue lines. That means that that's the line that you've graphed. You have to click one more time to make it blue. So until your line is blue, it is not set. So make sure you click the first line, click the second line, click it again, and that way it'll turn it blue. And then you save it. Oh, I'm sorry, um, I need to shade it. So now is, the shading is what's new. So the graphing is the same as what we've always done, okay? We graph the, or the, the Y intercept and then do your slope and then click again. Now with the shading, this is where, I'm gonna get my pencil again. This is where the test point zero, zero comes in, okay? What you're doing is you're testing to see if the point zero, zero is part of the solution set. Now with inequalities, you have a whole series of answers, of solution sets. Many, many different points will make this statement true, okay? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your test point and you're going to place it in your inequality. Here's the inequality. So my Y is zero, my X is zero. And now what I'm doing is I'm checking, is this a true or false statement? If it's a true statement, that means this zero, zero point is included in the solution set. Zero is not less than negative eight, right? Negative eight's much smaller. So this is what's called a false statement, okay? What that means is this zero, zero point right here doesn't is not included in the solution set, which means all of these points over here is what's included. So when you get a false statement, do not shade on the side of the line where the zero, zero is. You're gonna shade on the other side because all of these points are gonna be part of the solution set, okay? So to do that with your graphing tool, you come over here, you pick up your paint can. Make sure you know where you're shading first because you only want to use the paint can once. You don't want to, you don't want to use it two or three times because it'll mark it wrong. So the paint can is your shading tool. You're going to pick up the paint can. We know that the zero zero point is not part of the solution. It's on the other side. So I click it and that's it. I hit save and then I check my answer, okay? So the zero, zero point is the easiest point to decide which side of the line do we shade. If it's a true statement, you shade where the zero, zero is. If it's a false statement, you shade on the other side. Let me do one more for you. Now this, notice the inequality. It's in what's called standard form. All right, it's not y equals mx plus b anymore. Now it's in standard form. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna solve this using what's called the intercept method. And you guys learn this in 1.2 or you should have learned this in 1.2. So it's also called the cover-up. Okay, so the cover-up method is used when you have a standard linear equation, which means the x and y is on the same side of the inequality. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cover up my X term and I end up with four Y equals 12. Notice I don't care about the inequality anymore at this point. The inequality is used for shading, that's it. 
All right, so I'm gonna solve for my y-intercept and I get y equals three. Okay, now I'm going to cover up the y term and I end up with three x equals 12, divide both sides by three and I get x equals four. Okay, these are the two intercepts. These are the points. Y equals three is on the Y intercept and X equals four is on the X, um, X axis, excuse me, Y axis and X axis, X axis. Okay, so let me show how I am. So Y is three, X is four. Let me show how you're gonna graph it. Come over here, click to enlarge, make sure your, your line is the right um, one. It's solid because we have a greater than and equal. I pick up my graphing tool. It was y is three. So again, you can see the ordered pair zero, three. X is four. You can see the ordered pair four, zero. Click again. It's orange, which means it's not set. I'm gonna click again and make it blue, okay? So once it's blue, I know the, the line is set. Now I'm going to come back and I'm going to use my zero, zero again. So here is my inequality. And again, this is where the inequality comes back into play. So when X is zero, so I'm using my test point zero, zero. So when X is zero, Y is zero, I end up with zero is greater than or equal to 12. Is that true? Is zero bigger than 12? Well, no, it's a false statement, which tells me that this point right here is not part of the solution set, okay? So I have to graph it and shade it on the other side. So I'm gonna get out of here. I'm gonna pick up my paint can, click, save, and check. There it is, okay? So that's how you're gonna shade. That's a quick little review of how to shade. Um, I hope it helps. And I will continue to post videos when um, I am getting questions on certain things. Thank you.